Today I'm going to show you an awesome technique for recreating a motion blur in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com seven days a week where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. We got a cool episode for you today. Basically what we're doing is we're taking an image and we're adding motion blur to this image after the fact. Now there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind whenever you're gonna be doing this. First is you have to get your subject cut out from the background. If you don't cut your subject out from the background, they're gonna get the motion blur as well. Second thing is when you're actually applying the motion blur to your background, you have to make sure you clone stamp out your subject from the original background or they're going to wind up affecting your background. And then third is you have to design the blur on your image based on how the actual image looks. In other words, if it's just a sideways pan, you'll get a simple motion blur left to right. In this case, we're actually need a little bit more of a complex blur because we're working around a curve. Let's go ahead and get into it. It's gonna be an awesome episode. So here's our image we're working on today. This is by Jessica. Now before this episode, I already went ahead and cut out our subject using a pen path. So I'm gonna click on my paths here. We're gonna click right over here on our path, command click that, and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate our background layer there we go, and load that as a layer mask by clicking on a layer mask. We're gonna put a link on the video right now so you guys, in case you need to learn how to use the pen tool, you could just watch this other video and that's gonna save you guys some time. So I went ahead and cut out our subject. Basically what that gives us is just our subject right on a blank background. And again, we use the pen tool to do that. So with our subject on a back, blank background, let's talk about a couple things. Let's talk about if we just apply our blur to this image, and I'm gonna do a very simple blur. We're gonna go up to filter, blur, and then I'm gonna go down here to a motion blur. And we're just gonna do a side to side motion blur, angle of zero. This is something like if someone was just, you know, going in one direction or something like that, this would be a really good motion blur, like a, or a, you know, a car or something like that. There we go. We're gonna hit okay. And we have a nice motion blur on the background and we have our subject is cut out. But you probably are seeing a couple big problems and that's why we that's why we're talking about first you have to cut out your subject, second you have to remove your subject from the background and third you have to design a blur that's appropriate for this image. So first is done. We already cut out our subject. I used the pen tool to do that. But the second one, we didn't remove our subject from the background and this is what happens when you don't do that. The blur on the background. When you go ahead and apply the blur, it actually brings in, it blurs your subject as well, right? So it's blurring our subject over there. And even though we do have a cutout version of our subject over top of that, you can still see areas of the subject in the actual blur on the background. So that says, first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and not only cut out our subject, which we've done, we need to remove the subject from the background. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to do that. So we're gonna create a new layer, and this is really simple, guys. This is with a clone stamp tool. So S for the clone stamp tool, and all you have to do is sample areas around your image and then paint right in over top of your subject. So I'm holding Alt or Option to sample areas from my photograph and then painting right over top of my subject. Now, in this case, I don't have to be particularly precise with this. In a lot of cases, you wanna do a really good job clone stamping. In this case, because the background is gonna be getting a blur anyway, it doesn't really actually have to be perfect. So just do a rough job, just to make sure that like the colors and everything like that from your subject are gone. All right, let's go ahead and sample that. And in just a minute, he'll be out of the, out of the shrubbery. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and paint this in down here as well. And sample from this side. The key to clone stamping is just to sample from a bunch of different places. There we go. That keeps things from looking like they're just kind of redone over and over and over again. Okay, so you can see getting rid of our subject now, it's when we go to add, add that motion blur, we're not going to be adding our subject into the actual blur of the background. And I'll show you guys what that looks like before and after. Cool. Now I am gonna leave the skateboard in, and the reason is I, I want these like shadows and everything like that to stay and we're going to wind up working with that just a little bit. That's going to be like the trickiest part of the image is going to be where the skateboard hits the road. So we're going to spend a little bit more time on that. 
There we go. Let's just go ahead and finish this up. And again, this is not the best clone stamp job in the world. This is probably close to the worst clone stamp job in the world, but it doesn't really matter because we're adding quite a bit of blur to our background anyway. All right, and if you wanted to, you could even grab like a, a brush tool and I'm just gonna paint in a yellow line here. Wow, it's so amazing. And really there are uh, many, many better ways to do this. I am quite literally just doing a horrible job, but it's all gonna be blurred in a minute, so it won't matter. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and make a stamp visible layer. We're gonna hit Shift Option Command E to make our stamp visible layer. So now let's go ahead and give it that same blur. I'm gonna to go to Filter, Blur, we're gonna to go to Motion Blur, and we're gonna to go to Side by Side. And you can see that horrible job I did with the road, the background, the clone stamping, doesn't matter anymore because it's got this big motion blur. And now we got our subject on top of that. Okay, so you can see the difference. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna redo that original one. There we go. All right, okay. So here's the difference. Basically, this is the version where you don't remove your subject. You can see you have that outline, that halo, and this is the version where you do remove your subject. So step one, cut your subject out. We use the pen tool for that. Step two, remove your subject from the background. There we go. That's the version without removing him from the background. Okay, and this is the version with removing him from the background. Very cool. Now, our next step is we don't really want that type of blur, do we? We want a different blur that's going to have a basically, this blur, all right, <laughs> let me just explain what I'm talking about. Okay, so our image basically curves around this area. So we need a blur here that's gonna look like this, but here I want it to kind of look like that, right? We, they're, they're gonna be like changing directions as we go down the blur. So because of that change in direction, there's no tool in Photoshop that's actually designed to do this. It, there's, we have side to side motion blurs, we can zoom, we can spin and things like that, but we can't change direction of a zoom, not yet as far as, as far as Photoshop CC goes. So what we have to do is we have to do a couple of different blurs and then we're gonna put those together to kind of fake it. Okay, so the first blur we're going to do, and this again is on a stamp visible layer. So this is just the version that shows you guys you know, the previous blur there. This is a stamp visible layer with our subject removed here. Okay, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to a, well, you can just do your regular filters if you want, or you can use smart objects and that will allow you to change your filters over time. So we're gonna use smart objects here. It's actually, it's really not that hard to do and it's gonna allow you to op a lot of options. So I'm gonna right click here and go to create, convert to smart object. Cool, it's a smart object now and then it gives you access to smart filters, which you can change after. So I'm gonna to go to filter, we're gonna go down to blur, and then I'm gonna to go to radio blur. So instead of a motion blur, which is just one direction, we're gonna to go to a radio blur. Okay, let's choose a zoom center around that side, because we want, this is gonna be for the bottom, we want everything to kind of be zooming in that direction. And we'll just choose some options and hit okay. Cool, so we can see how this looks. And if we had one point perspective, this would work totally, you know, this would work really well, where everything was zooming towards the same way. But obviously the trees in the background, that doesn't look right. Down here on the road, it looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do, maybe that's a little too much blur and I don't like what it's doing on the road. So let's double click on radio blur again because we made this a smart object. I can just double click on this radio blur. We can change this. I'm gonna move that down a little bit and we're gonna change our blur. Okay, cool. I like this blur now a little bit better for what we've got going on here on the ground and on the road and everything like that. Okay. So that's taking care of half of our photo. So we're gonna put a layer mask on this layer and then I'm just going to paint black on the top part of this photo. So painting black is basically just gonna revert it back to just the original photo, how would it would have looked before we even started this. All right, there we go. And we're gonna be taking care of the bottom part of the photo because that's gonna be going basically in one direction. Cool, that looks really nice. So now what we're gonna do is duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate this layer. Let's go ahead and fill this layer mask with white so we'll have everything visible again. And now I'm gonna change where the radial blur has its center because it, right now it doesn't make sense to have the center be over there because for the rest of the image we need it to be going the other way. So we're gonna double click here again on radial blur and I'm gonna move the center this way 
and we're gonna lower the amount of blur because the farther something is from the camera, the less of a motion blur it's gonna have. There we go. Let's hit okay. And there we go. So now we can see we've got a completely different blur. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna paint black on the layer mask on the bottom here. There we go. And so what we have is our one radial blur on one side of the image and the other radial blur is on the other side of the image. So let's go ahead and minimize and show you guys that. So here's a standard image without any blur but with our subject removed. Here's the bottom blur. There we go. Let's just fix that there. Here's the bottom blur and then here's the side blur. So combine them, we've got a nice blur that goes in both directions. Now sometimes you will get an area like this where you, the bottom blur meets the side blur. Here's my suggestion for that. Okay, my suggestion for that is to create a new layer and use the smudge tool. Now it's not the cleanest tool, but because we are using blurs, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure you use sample all layers. And I'm just gonna kinda smudge those together right around the curve. I normally don't use the smudge tool, but when we're talking about a blur, that's exactly what it does. It just kind of blurs things around. So it's going to get rid of that area where it's, you know, looks like basically you go from one blur to the other. Now this technique is not perfect because it doesn't, you know, we're applying one blur that looks like this and one blur that looks like this. I would love it if there was a blur that just kind of curved around. Photoshop doesn't have that as an option. So this is the closest we're going to get. So we've got that right now as our backdrop and now all we have to do is pop our subject back over top of our image and we are good to go. I'll, what I'm going to do is just layer mask out a couple of these wheels just to give it a little bit more. There we go. Awesome. Gnarly shredding it. Okay, and then on the top of that, we're just gonna grab the smudge tool again, and I'm just gonna smudge this stuff together. Smudge tool is an awesome tool whenever you're working with blurs. You can kinda smudge his foot or whatever have you. So it's like, there's a little bit more motion on the board. And then you can add a little bit more, you know, a little bit of motion to your subject here if you wanted to do that. Just every, you know, maybe his hand out here has got a little bit of motion coming on. So smudge tool is a really great tool for that. Awesome. This is great, guys. So there we have it. We've tackled all of our problems. So the first thing, again, cut out your subject from the background. Second is going to be remove your subject from the background using the clone stamp tool. And the third is going to be design a blur on the background that actually works for your image. And in this case, we had a very complex blur, but a lot of the times you can just use a motion blur going from side to side, and that's going to work perfectly fine. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flirt. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments or ideas for future episodes, just leave them in a comment right down below. That's how we get our new ideas for episodes. And if you like what we're doing here at Flirt and want to receive updates, we release two to three episodes on Photoshop and photography every single week. All you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you like this episode, be sure to hit the like button because that helps us out as a YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys, and we'll Flirt you later. Flirt.com, seven days a week where we, we make la la la. Watching Flurn. I hope this episode helps you out. Please.